So today we are with uh, Mr. Tom Sutherland Jr. Uh, he has many life experiences that we would like to chronicle today, uh, and I will be conducting an interview to uh, go over his life experiences and how this has affected his experiences in Hillsborough and his uh, his events of his life. So, Mr. Shalini, could you first give us an introduction about yourself? Um, I guess we we start by stating that I've been on this earth for 76 years, so I've acquired a lot of experiences that, uh, um, that have been beneficial. Uh, I've been a resident of Hillsboro. It will be 40 years this December uh, that we moved into Hillsboro, and uh, I'm currently involved in a lot of uh, township activities uh, and a lot of veterans organizations. Uh, um, I have a couple of sons who graduated from Immaculata High School uh, in Somerville and went on to college. They're uh, now uh, at different areas in the country. Uh, my oldest son is a trial attorney in New York City and uh, lives in the Rockaways. Uh, and he has three children. Uh, and my youngest son currently resides just outside of Atlanta in Alpharetta, Georgia. He has uh, three children also, and uh, he's a Naval Academy graduate who spent 11 years in active duty uh, in the Navy and has been with GE Healthcare since uh, 2005. I'm married and uh, have been married. Uh, we will celebrate our 52nd wedding anniversary in uh, October of this year. So uh, that pretty much chronicles my life in a, in a nutshell, I guess, uh, to coin a term. Yeah, very interesting. So what are the most meaningful experiences you've had in Hillsboro, and how have you seen the town change over the years? Well, let's start with the latter question first. The, the town has changed dramatically since the time that I first arrived. Uh, we moved in. I got transferred to New Jersey uh, from Buffalo, New York uh, in September of 1979. And we had made many moves. In fact, in our first uh, 14 years of marriage, we had six different homes. So we were very accustomed to moving at that time. And we had a, a little protocol that we went through. And, and uh, uh, I would uh, take my new assignment and uh, um, hook up with a real estate agent. We go out looking at different properties and different townships and narrow them down before my wife would come out and together we would make a final choice. And uh, he'll, uh, My assignment was in uh, an office. Uh, I worked with Allstate Insurance Company at the time. Uh, and my assignment was in Greenbrook, New Jersey, where I was managing a, a claim office. So. We started looking in an area around that, looking as far east as Westfield, and then as far uh, to the west as uh, Hillsboro and Bridgewater. And um, heard about the township of Hillsboro, which is a, a township that was really on the rise, was, uh, was growing, uh, but was still a very small town at, atmosphere. I believe when we got here, the, the population of Hillsboro was about 18,000, 16 to 18,000 people. This is, would have been in 19, uh, uh, 1969, the latter part of 69. Uh, presently, I believe we're uh, 44,000 residents. So I've seen tremendous growth as far as population. And uh, uh, back at that time, uh, uh, one of the main hubs of Hillsborough right now is called the Nelson's Corner Shopping Center. It's a shopping center with ShopRite as, a, as an anchor store and many, many stores in there. When I first arrived in Hillsborough, that was an open pasture, and there was a farmhouse owned by the Nelson family. And that's how it got the name Nelson's Corner. So we've seen that activity. We've seen homes uh, put up in areas that were strictly farmland in the past. So a tremendous uh, uh, ch change that came about. 
one of the unique things that, that I found uh, was the transportation back and forth to my office in Greenbrook after we moved in. We had to go through what was uh, affectionately referred to as the Somerville Circle. And the Somerville Circle might have been one of the greatest bottlenecks in traffic history in the state of New Jersey. It was dangerous, there were accidents there all of the time. And one of the things that uh, we look forward to was the talk of a bypass uh, on Route 206. Mind you, this was 1979 that we were talking about that bypass, and uh, I believe it was uh, 2014 where the middle section of that bypass finally became a reality. So uh, that's the primary changes we've seen in Hillsborough, the, the sprawl, the population growth, and uh, um, the, the construction of, of high school. Uh, when we moved into the township, uh, the high school had been built for a very short while, and they were going through a expansion of the school, and, and that uh, that uh, came about. And as soon as the expansion was completed, it was determined that the school was too small, and we'd have to consider another. And we considered building a second high school, and um, never got voted on. So. Uh, um, we sit here a number of years later looking at the tremendous growth in the population of the high school also. And uh, um, so those are, those are the things that I remember most about Hillsborough and I guess it impressed me uh, much about it. Over the years, the township has seen recognition based on uh, being a good place to live and adopted the good life uh, theme, which uh, uh, many many themes come about, and, and when you look at it and say, how did they ever name it that? But I think Hillsborough is pretty appropriate. Uh, uh, pretty nice community to live in, and uh, uh, although each community has its, up, its faults and its positive and negative points, the positive points far outweigh the negative points uh, residing in Hillsborough. Yeah, the story of change is one that is very common to Hillsborough, um, as, in, as you may know, uh, in, the, in the past, in Hillsborough's founding years, there were mostly farms in this area. People used this for farming. Uh, surprisingly, there was use of slavery and other injustices. But Hillsborough has changed over time. And one other example is in the corner of Amwell and 206, uh, Woods Tavern used to be there, and now that's a shopping complex. So it shows how the change of times brings about the change in the people and the change in the town. Uh, so, so what would you say are the most significant experiences or events for you that happened in Hillsborough? That happened in Hillsborough? Uh, um, there were a number of them. Uh, uh, my son is graduating from high school and, and going on to uh, higher education in various schools. Uh, um, it is certainly one of the highlights. Uh, um, I serve in a, in a, in a number of uh, veterans organizations. Veterans uh, um, assistance uh, are, are one of the, the things that I'm deeply involved in. I'm on the Township Veterans Committee. Uh, I'm also the commander of the Hillsborough Veterans of Foreign Wars Post uh, 8371. I'm also a disabled veteran, so I'm a lifetime member of the Somerville Chapter 16 of the Disabled American Veterans, and I also hold membership in the American Legion, so a lot of my time uh, is involved in the, uh, the uh, military endeavors uh, between uh, our local uh, military problems that we encounter uh, we're also doing an awful lot of work at the Lions Veterans Hospital in, uh, in Lions, New Jersey. So, um, also involved, uh, my, my uh, religion is Catholic, so we're very involved in our, our church, Mary Mother of God Church in, in Hillsborough on, on uh, South Triangle Road. Um, my wife and I are involved in a number of ministries there, and... Uh, uh, so, we, that obviously, religion is very important to us. Veterans are very important to us. And 
Uh, we both also serve on several township committees. Uh, um, my wife and I have been uh, very uh, lucky in our lives. And, and, uh, we decided that after we both retired uh, that we would spend the rest of our lives uh, giving back. I guess you could call that a highlight. Uh, I serve on the, uh, the uh, Capital Planning Committee and uh, my wife currently serves on the Board of Adjustment. So uh, those are the, the three activities we're mainly involved in, our church, uh, our township activities, and uh, veterans activities. Uh, uh, plus my wife is involved in just about every ministry there is at Mary Mother of God Church. So, uh, we're, we're doing our, our share of trying to give back to the community. Yeah, I think the desire of the residents to give back to the community is one thing that ties us all together and what makes this town uh, exceptional, and uh, especially relative to surrounding towns. So um, are there any unique facts or uh, things you know about Hooker that you would like to share? Unique facts? Uh, let's see. You know, other than what we've talked about, the, uh, the school system is, is great. Uh, even though my sons never went to uh, the Hillsborough High School, uh, uh, in their formative years, they played an awful lot of sports uh, and interacted with a number of students. So they, they were friendships, uh, and boyfriend and girlfriend type relationship with Hillsborough students. So, uh, you know, we were always... Uh, proud of, of the, the fact that uh, the Hillsborough school system is a is an excellent school system. Uh, I think the town government over the years uh, uh, has uh, uh, you know done an awful lot in order to benefit the uh, Hillsborough community and Hillsborough residents. Uh, and of course, there's always more you can do, but uh, I think the uh, the involvement of Personnel, uh, uh, when you mentioned uh, just a, a short minute or two ago about uh, volunteerism and people being involved in Hillsborough, I think, uh, uh, and I agree with you, it is a trait in Hillsborough, but I think it's an American trait. I think Americans, uh, as, as a rule, when others are in trouble, they kind of step up to the plate and they get involved and... and uh, that's one of the things that, uh, that you learn over the years, uh, your pride in America because of things like that. Uh, so, uh, as far as any other, any other highlights, I, I, don't, I don't really know. I'm not necessarily a historian at Hillsborough, so uh, usually uh, the things that I, I'm aware of are things that I'm personally involved in. in the, Um, you know, other than that, uh, I can't think of anything. Yeah, obviously, Hillsborough is a great town, as we all know. But what are some societal improvements you think should be or can be made to the town? Well, uh, I, I think that um, it's a it's a difficult question that requires some thought. Uh, you know, we can always improve the way we interact with all of our neighbors within the community uh, um, as we keep assimilating new people not only into Hillsborough but into our country. There's always room uh, uh, to learn each other's cultures and things like that. We are a diverse community uh, at this particular time, uh, and I'm sure there are things that... Uh, that we need to do in order to um, not only share uh, thoughts about diversity, but also retain uh, some of the, the values that we have. Uh, and I think there's a room to do both. Uh, I am very concerned on a national basis about um, the 
protection of our borders, especially in light of the terrorism activity that's been going on over the years. Um, so I'm very concerned about that. So we walk a very fine line when we, we talk about protecting our borders by limiting who can come in and the opportunity that made our company great, being a diverse uh, community. So uh, those are some of the challenges that uh, we face in Hillsboro, that we face in New Jersey, and that we face uh, in the United States. Yeah. And they're all interesting points to bring up. And I think I agree with the fact that there's a fine line between uh, managing diversity and also protecting our country. Um, so Hillsboro is a diverse town of about 40,000 residents, as you previously mentioned. But there is some underlying sense of connection that brings us all together. Why do you think this is, and why do you think Hillsboro is so close knit as a community? Well, I, th I think a lot of it has to do with, with the fact that uh, um, when you're <clears throat> melding different cultures in a township, and, and we've been doing that over the past number of years, uh, there's, there's a tendency uh, to, to reach out to people. Uh, um, I think the, the type of residents that we've attracted over the year, at least over the, the time period that I've been here, um, is uh, of the nature that we have an awful lot of professional people that reside that seek out Hillsborough because of the quality of life uh, because of the school systems, because of the availability of real estate. Uh, um, but as we all know, Hillsborough is not an inexpensive place to reside in. Uh, you have to be a, a, a family of means. Uh, uh, you don't have to be, but, but it's, it, it's certainly helpful. Uh, uh, so I, I think the quality of people that we uh, have attracted through the years has been very beneficial to them. Community. Because many of these people then have sought <clears throat> to become involved in township politics or in organizations within the township that, uh, that prove uh, to be beneficial uh, not only to the township but to America as well. So, uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think. Yeah, those are all valid points. I think the desire for Hillsborough residents to be connected to each other and get involved in the community, especially because of our diversity, is part of the factor that brings us all together. So although the town of Hillsborough is insignificant, may seem insignificant in the global picture, why is it so important to chronicle the history of this town? Well, I think it's always important to chronicle history. Uh, in fact, if my wife were with me today, she would be a, uh, a staunch supporter of that. She was a, uh, she spent 20 years, the first 20 years of her working life in education where she was a history teacher. In fact, uh, at Immaculata High School where she taught for a number of years, she was the, uh, she taught history to seniors, civics to seniors. And then became the head of the history department and then the director of guidance and counseling until she went into the private sector. Uh, so uh, she is one that's always impressed upon us, uh, us being myself and, and my, my two sons, the importance of history. Uh, uh, that uh, unless we know history and study history and follow history, we might make the same mistakes that we've made during our history, so it's important that we, we chronicle that. Uh, it's also important, uh, my ethnic background is Italian. Um, my grandfather was born in Italy, uh, didn't speak much English, uh, um, and one of the regrets that I had is that I didn't spend more time as a young man sitting with him and picking his brain about what, what it was like to make the transition from another country into the United States. I know it was a, a certain an adjustment in, in, in my heart goes out to any immigrant who uh, you know, doesn't handle it, the English language very well when they get here because uh, uh, it can be a, a real impediment to, uh, to 
to, to becoming involved in, in the community and, and things like that. But I think I just think it's it's very important to uh, to chronicle that because of situations like that. There, uh, I think over the, the past fifteen or twenty years, the American uh, population has been become very tuned into the genealogy. Uh, learning more about our ancestors, where we came from, and, and things like that. And without it being chronicled and documented someplace in history, it's very difficult to put together. Uh, we tried tracing our roots uh, back to Italy and uh, found out there were very few written records that are available in, in, um, in, in Europe, and I'm sure in, in some of the other cultures throughout the world, uh, the same thing is true. So. Uh, uh, that's the reason I feel it's, it's important to document the history. And so uh, our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren will, will have the benefit of, of that They're readily available to them and uh, uh, written in a first-hand uh, uh, knowledge uh, as opposed to being interpreted by scholars who think this is what happened at that time based on other investigations. I know immigration may be a contentious topic, but America has had a long and proud history of accepting people and refugees who come in seek of a better life. Um, what do you think of the place of America in doing that in modern society? And how do you think modern day immigration and taking in refugees and people from abroad differs from that of the past? The major difference is that uh, immigration in past years has been done legally in conformance with the laws of the United States of America. Over the past 15 or 20 years, that system seems to have broken down. And you know, we have many immigrants uh, coming in seeking asylum and uh, at one point in time, I believe America tried to accommodate each and every one that came here. The events of uh, September 11th, 2001 changed all of that. We, we had outside terrorist forces now professing that they were going to do things that would adversely or affect or harm citizens in the United States. It's interesting to note historically that all of the conflicts, the armed conflicts that the United States has been involved in have been outside of its borders, have been in other areas of the world. Uh, I think uh, September 11th was a reality check. For the first time, uh, there were losses of, of lives, uh, and property inflicted within our own borders in the United States. And I think that uh, creates a need, in my estimation at least, that uh, um, we, we go back and take a look at how these terrorists who did the damage got into our country, number one. And I think our investigation to date has found that most of them or many of them um, immigrated illegally into the United States. And uh, uh, I'm 100% for legal immigration, and I'm 100% against illegal immigration. Uh, and I'm very frustrated with our Congress and our federal government for their uh, inability to formulate and then enforce immigration laws that uh, would ensure that the people in the United States are, are free from uh, people trying to get into the country illegally and, and create chaos and cause harm. So in today's day and age, that's a very touchy subject. Yeah. And, uh, being a veteran and having served three years in the United States Army, um, 
we have a mission. Uh, once you, you wear the uniform of the United States, you have a mission to protect its citizens. And, and when you see uh, things that are going on, and, and in your estimation, feel that there are some uh, problems that need to be fixed, yet we're not fixing them, uh, uh, it's perplexing, it, it, concerning uh, to all of us. So we need to get that resolved. And, uh, Unfortunately, our political system is uh, at, a, at a point right now where it is not nearly as effective as it used to be in the past, and that needs to be fixed. And I, I wish I knew how to fix it, because I would, but uh, it's a complicated situation. Recently, there's been controversy over the U.S.'s intervention in international affairs, perhaps in the affairs of other countries. Uh, some opponents of U.S. intervention in other countries may find the U.S. to be overly aggressive. What do you think of this? And do you think the U.S. should have a position of uh, having a watchdog-like position over other countries and imposing or embracing our values in the international scale? First of all, uh, I think we're, we're getting away from Hillsborough when we start talking about national type activities, but on a personal basis, uh, I believe that the United States uh, has a duty to its citizens to intervene wherever the interests of the United States are at risk. And uh, I think that's a duty that, that we have to protect those citizens. So. Uh, our involvement in conflicts outside of the United States has always been a bone of contention. Uh, not to the level it has been recently because of um, the media's involvement. Uh, we tend to have instant news and, and a lot of activities that uh, were never present in the past. So we. We weren't as aware of what was going on in other areas of the world as we are today. Uh, unfortunately, in the age of the internet, anybody can get on and sell themselves as a news agency. And uh, we've, I think if you stop and look at uh, every hundred articles that comes across your desk, the numbers of them that are actual, factual, and research are in a, in a minority. So we're, we're bombarded with an awful lot of things that uh, are not necessarily true, not only internationally, but also events going on in the United States. So, uh, the political process is a, a good example about that. So, uh, you know, uh, bottom line is that uh, whenever the interests of the United States in protecting its citizens are at risk, I, I think the United States needs to become involved in, in protecting the interests of, of uh, our country and more importantly our citizens. Yeah. Especially considering the changing times, how do you think the residents of Hillsborough should become involved? Should they become involved and how can they become involved in changing their community and becoming community leaders? Uh, to answer your first question, they should be involved. Every resident of Hillsborough, every resident of the United States has a duty and obligation to participate in government affairs. I, I'm a poll worker. I've been a poll worker for a number of years. And I'm appalled at the apathy that I see of the American citizen uh, when it comes to voting. Um, I, I can recall spending 15 hours, and that's what we do during polling day. We spend 15 hours at the polls working. And, and uh, during that time period, you know, see less than 50 people show up to vote during the course of, of that particular time. Even on national elections, presidential elections, if we get 30%, 35% of our uh, registered voters out voting, uh, it, it's 
it is uh, unusual. Uh, so I think unless you get out and vote, and unless you get involved in politics within your own township, you forfeit your right to then complain about some of the activities that are going on. Um, so to answer your question in a lot of words, we all need to become involved in the political process within our township. We need to become involved in volunteering to give back to the township, to sit on the various boards that govern our, our township and, and do our part. Um, the worst thing that you can have is just the power invested in a few people within a, in a particular uh, township or, or a, uh, a state. Uh, the more people involved, the better your result is always going to be. A lot of large numbers says that it's going to be, it's a proven fact, and it's going to be a better result. Yeah. So, so Puerto Rico is a very, a very close-knit community. It's a great town. It's a safe place for its residents. We have many activities to do. But in the past, especially in the town's founding years, in the 18th century, early 19th century, there were injustices occurring in this town. Slavery, surprisingly, was present to a small degree here. How do you think Hillsborough and perhaps other towns across the United States can reconcile with their injustices of the past? Uh, do you think this should be done, and how, how can this be done? I, I don't know how uh, we can go back a hundred, two hundred years ago and have this generation be responsible for the actions of people that took place many, many years ago. Um, I have difficulty with that concept. Um, I, you know, it's like um, going back and trying me for something that someone in my family did many years ago. Um, I think the way we resolve that problem is to ensure that people who are involved in our community at this time have every available opportunity made to them and work on the many problems that we have as a, um, as a state, as a culture in the United States in improving current relationships. That's the reparations that I think that need to be done. If we want to correct an injustice that had happened many, many years ago, we do it by dealing and making this place a better place to live right now. Not necessarily utilizing money to do that, not necessarily uh, you know, using uh, a, a system that places um, refugees or minorities at the head of the class uh, without them uh, having been involved themselves in, in trying to better themselves. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that um, affirmative action in the United States did an awful lot of wonderful things over the years. But one of the shortcomings of affirmative action, in my estimation, has been that we gave preference to certain classes of individuals uh, based on uh, <coughs> factors and gave them an unfair advantage uh, when in fact it might not have been warranted. In an effort sometimes to appease or satisfy the community, the political process tends to um, try to figure out how many giveaways we can give away in order to get reelected. I'm a firm believer in term limits. I believe term limits are, are something that uh, should apply not only to the President of the United States, but to every office holder on a national basis. Uh, and that would solve a number of our problems uh, 
uh, if, if we would do that. So, so history is full of injustices, uh, from slavery to other injustices. But and it may seem it, it probably is impossible for us to fix all these different that is to fix all these injustices to right all these wrongs. Um, and it, history is full of uh, per, per, preserving uh, those in power who may have committed injustices. Um, in Hillsboro, this has not this is not to a large extent, but many of the prominent names we know in town um, of families, prominent families. They were slave owners in the founding days of this town, and more on a larger scale, uh, with the preservation of uh, things like Confederate statues in uh, regions of the United States. Do you think it's more important to preserve history, uh, or what do you think about the people calling for the removal of these artifacts of history? I think preserving history is of the utmost importance. And we talked about the value of documenting history and things like that. The, uh, it, it, I think over the last number of years, we've run into what we call politically correct things to do. And we start, again, having character assassinations, innuendos, false stories being uh, circulated in order to make changes uh, uh, in, in some of the historical uh, things that, it, that happened uh, over the years. Um, in many, many instances, the statues that we make reference to have been part of our culture for, since our founding, or, or shortly after our founding. I think it's important that we remember that because everybody who's done something wrong has also done a lot of things right. And uh, I, I think we get into a very um, a very difficult situation when we start trying to um, hold people accountable years and years after the fact. Uh, it, it just, I have difficulty with that. Uh, and that's probably because of the fact that uh, of my age and, and, and the, the fact that I am a conservative individual and uh, um, we just have some difficulty with that on a personal level. So. Do you think, those are all valid points, do you think history should be about correcting these injustices? Obviously history is uh, intended for us to learn from the mistakes of the past. But what do you think of the balance between learning from these mistakes and not erasing history from the past? History is history. Certain th things are documented because of positive things that were, were done. Uh, circumstances that came about. I think to document those historical things are, are great. However, our religion, my religion, teaches us to recognize that everyone's a sinner. And in our lifetimes, no matter how good we are, we've made some sins along the way. We, we've done some things that, looking back in retrospect, we probably should not have been involved in. So if we're documenting history, we should document historical factors and um, also recognize that not everyone is a saint. Uh, 100% of the time of their lives. And, uh, uh, but, you know, to erase things like it never happened in history is an injustice, injustice to the historical process because that's part of who we are. That's how we got to where we are right now. And to just say and erase that, uh, uh, because of some belief or something that supposedly was said, 
uh, creates a problem, at least for me. Uh, that's a decision the American people have to deal with, and, and the township of Hillsborough have to deal with if, it, if we're talking about things that happen over here. We have to go back and look at, you know, especially when you talk about slavery, we have to go back and look at, at, at the times. Uh, uh, that was an acceptable thing at that particular time. Doesn't make it right, doesn't make it right today. But you, you have to, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the individuals back at that time, and I'm sure you're old enough to know that peer pressure is a, a tremendous thing. I'm sure you go through it in high school, and uh, we go through it in our formative years, and I smoked for a number of years, not because I enjoyed smoking, but because it was cool. I, I was one of the boys at that particular time, uh, and, and we all go through those periods in our lives. And, uh, I would hate to uh, personally have to go through some uh, test, politically correct test, uh, for things I, I did as a youth. Uh, I think the recent Supreme Court appointment of Judge Kavanaugh probably uh, appalled me to, to see what went on at that particular time. So um, we. We get, we run the risk of getting ourselves involved in controversies that, that need to be. I don't say about that. So you gave an interesting story about your background and your grandfather. How have your experiences uh, in the military and other lives, as well as your life's experience teaching history, taught you about why it's so important to preserve history, especially the history of our local community? Now, it's going back to my grandfather, there were regrets that I had because uh, as I got older, you kind of become curious about your own life and your family. Where did I come from? And uh, some of the things that uh, uh, once the grandparents or once the mom and dad are gone, you no longer have a point of reference uh, unless it's been documented someplace. Uh, so, you know, those are the the shortcomings that you have. Uh, um, I think one of the things that uh, you're exposed to in the military is uh, um, your initial training centers around the historical factors, the, the military operations, uh, uh, the chain of command, and, 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 and knowing uh, about the history of the military that you serve in like that. Um, I happen to be a, a, a veteran of the, uh, the Vietnam era conflict and uh, um, I, I can be quite candid today's day and age. After I spent three years in the army and got out, um, I was not pleased with the fact of the way I was treated, nor was I um, necessarily uh, proud of my military service. In fact, for a period of time, wanted nothing to do with anything involving military. When I got discharged from the Army, we were called war criminals, baby killers. Uh, we didn't have parades. Uh, and for a long period of time, uh, that really, really bothered me. And I think it bothers most Vietnam veterans. We were probably the only group of veterans that came back that were not uh, lauded for their service and for their, uh, their, their uh, sacrifices that they made uh, during that time period. Uh, I think what changed it for me uh, was when my youngest son, uh, was appointed to the United States Naval Academy and went there. It, uh, it, it kind of had me sit down and think about some of the things that I had experienced and I came to the conclusion that I was part of the problem with the Vietnam aftermath as opposed to part of the solution. And, and I uh, uh, experienced 
uh, turned up to my son uh, what it meant to be a member of the military and made the decision at that time that I was going to uh, become involved and uh, uh, spend whatever time I had left uh, working with veterans and, and helping them out and their families. Uh, uh, so that was a, a turning a turning point in, in my life. Uh, uh, but we find out that history is, is documented through the years as a great um, learning experience for all of us. Not enough of us uh, take the time to read about and understand what's happened in the past. Uh, I know when I was in school, I was not necessarily a history buff because at that time, uh, history was kind of relegated to the fact that, of memorizing dates and things like that. And I thought uh, maybe the teaching staff at that time missed the point. Uh, I don't know if it was important to know the dates that the Civil War took place uh, as opposed to the reason that the Civil War take, took place. And I think... Uh, uh, that was part of that was part of my learning experience uh, as I became an adult and, and uh, now was raising a family and trying to impart upon ourselves uh, the importance of, of history and, and the importance of uh, volunteering and the importance of giving back. So, uh, uh, and then. My wife, as I had mentioned before, is a, has been a history buff all of her life and uh, taught history for many, many years. And uh, she was involved in a, in a very interesting project at Immaculata High School uh, during the uh, gubernatorial contest that pitted uh, Jim Florio against Tom Kane. Uh, this goes back into the 80s. And... Uh, uh, she was successful in, in organizing a mock election in the, in the high school that actually uh, had both candidates come to the school and speak to the assembly of kids uh, in the school system. And then they had a, uh, a campaign and an election in the, in the school. And uh, believe it or not, the election results of the Maculata High School mirrored the election results of the Kane uh, Florio uh, campaign Tom Kane becoming the governor at that particular time. But, uh, uh, an example of the process of uh, uh, the need to get involved, the need to have an understanding. <clears throat> and my wife will, will go to social gatherings nowadays and have many of her ex-students come back up to her and still remember that experience of, and, and telling her, you know, I've been voting in every election since you did that. So some of the things that uh, are important that, that we do during our lifetime but uh, um, maybe don't do enough of. Well, Sparrow's a town in the middle of New Jersey. It may not receive much national attention. Are there any times in uh, that you've been in Alberta that it has risen to national fame or has any significant events like that? Well, I think the, there's been a lot of uh, documentation why a Money Magazine and a number of other publications about Hillsborough being one of the great places, uh, not only in the state of New Jersey, but in the United States to, to reside in. So uh, we have gotten, as a community, uh, both national and local recognition uh, based on, uh, and there's a number of criteria that they use to, to, to select it. Um, school systems, the crime rate, and a number of other things, factors are taken into consideration. Uh, but w when you get a national publication like Money Magazine uh, listing Hillsborough as one of the, uh, the top 50 places in the United States, and I think we placed at that time number 18 on, on the list, the places there's small towns in the United States to live in, uh, that's, that's certainly uh, you know, great recognition. And uh, um, I think Hillsborough received its its share of local recognition. Uh, uh, I think you know, one of the things that uh, the township does is, is uh, 
works with, with veterans. It's, in fact, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm in the Township Veterans Committee, and I'll be at, attending a meeting later on this afternoon of the Veterans Committee uh, to uh, talk about Memorial Day, uh, the commemoration of Memorial Day, and, and, and then in the fall, the celebration of Veterans Day, and, and the other veterans' activities that, that go on. Uh, uh, one of the things that concerns me each year as we go through the Memorial Day Parade, and as I think back to my days as a, as a youth, Memorial Day uh, parades were a huge, huge thing. We were, uh, a good part of the township would turn out to watch the parade, to celebrate, to, to uh, uh, honor the veterans who served. In today's day and age, um, there are very few people that turn out. Uh, we, we, as a nation, sometimes uh, uh, forget the sacrifices that many men and women have made in order to allow Hillsborough to say, if you live here, it's the good life. Because without that military veteran, it might not be the good life. So in the 1940s, Hillsborough housed Italian and German prisoners of war uh, in uh, nearby to this uh, place, actually. Uh, have there any have there been any events since you moved to Hillsboro as significant as that, or any uh, history changing events in Hillsboro that have happened? History changing, you know. Every day within Hillsboro, we have a Hillsboro historical change that takes place uh, on a state level or, or a national level. Off the top of my and I, I don't know, we've had some notoriety come out. Uh, um, the Duke Estate, which is uh, one of the prominent uh, uh, features of our, our township, uh, uh, back when, shortly after I got here, went through a, uh, a, a difficult situation after the uh, Doris Duke uh, passed away. Uh, there was court battles over the will and all kinds of things that that got all kinds of notoriety uh, for Hillsboro and, and, and the state of New Jersey, uh, uh, not necessarily positive notoriety. Uh, uh, other than that, uh, I, I know shortly after I got here, uh, the Hillsboro High School football team won a state championship in football, and uh, town had a great celebration where the football team was driven through the streets in the back of fire trucks and things like that and greeted. Um, that was a, a sporting event. The sports teams uh, over the years have had championships that have brought uh, notoriety to the, to the township uh, uh, of Hillsboro. Well, we've had a couple of professional athletes come out of Hillsboro that brought some notoriety to the township. But as, as far as true historical events, uh, in the 40 years that I've been here, I, I have difficulty thinking of any. So the history of the school system is one thing that students often neglect. Uh, they may not know much about it, although it's a very interesting aspect of the town. Your student, your kids went to in Maculada, but do you know any interesting facts about the history of the Hillsborough school system? Um, you know, I do, uh, I'm kind of reluctant to talk about that because they involved the decision as to why my sons went to Immaculate High School as opposed to Hillsborough High School. Uh, um, the, the school was having some problems that um, were drug related at that particular time uh, and, and we didn't want to expose our sons to that. Uh, and I think uh, part of the problem was is that the school system, in, 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 uh, without naming names or, or not having direct knowledge, uh, was in a cover-up mode as opposed to recognizing or admitting that there are certain things wrong. When I first arrived in Hillsborough, the 
uh, the politics of, of the um, uh, township was in flux. Um, this had been a long time, as you pointed out, farming community and, and uh, a lot of long time residents. Uh, as Hillsborough started to grow, they started to import um, members from uh, cities around the state, in addition to bringing people in from outside of the state. And uh, a lot of social problems started to arise. And I don't know necessarily, and this is a personal opinion, uh, whether or not the township was, was able to or ready to, to cope with that. And I think uh, it took a while in order to get some different perspectives in the political process and in the administrative process of the school in order to um, deal with some of those particular problems. Uh, uh, it, it was a uh, primary reason why my sons, my sons had been in public school most of the time before coming to New Jersey. And, and we made the decision as well as, and it wasn't only a Hillsborough related uh, problem, it was many of the school systems. In fact, for a time period, Immaculata was overloaded with applicants, had to turn away applicants in order to, for that very reason, because they were trying to uh, escape some of the social problems, primarily drugs, that were entering into the school systems, uh, the public school systems. And uh, uh, public school systems being an advantage because they had to accept any student, whereas the public, or the private schools could pick and choose and could expel anyone uh, uh, for not uh, following the rules of the school and things like that. So that was. Uh, that was some of the problems that, that we ran into. What is one most significant success and one most significant shortcoming you've had in your life? The most significant success? Uh, I've had a lot of successes uh, and a lot of disappointments. Uh, in 76 years, that happens. Uh, and, and you will find that out as you experience life. Um, I think uh, my most significant success was raising a, a family that uh, uh, has been successful and uh, has given back uh, to the community. Uh, um, as I mentioned before, my wife uh, spent many, many years in education, uh, teaching in, in school systems. Uh, throughout the country and overseas. She also taught in the, when I was in the military, she was with me overseas in, in Germany and she taught over there. That's where our oldest son was, was born. Uh, the, uh, when she left uh, the uh, educational community, she went to work in the private sector, uh, working in a real estate function and rose to uh, position of director of the uh, international organization of relocations uh, of coal bankers. Uh, uh, there was actually a point in time where we lived separately uh, because of our jobs, uh, with me being here in New Jersey, and she's spent five years in, in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, working there, and then another four years in, in uh, Mission Viejo, California, working at uh, their Goldwell Banker's home office at the time. Um, as far as uh, my successes, uh, I guess the, the greatest success I had was, was raising my family. Uh, uh, not necessarily through anything I did, but you, know, you get lucky when you, when you pick good kids and a good wife. Um, the, uh, uh, some of the highlights, uh, uh, as I look back, uh, some of the things that I did in the military would certainly be a highlight because of the 
activity that I was involved in, which uh, uh, I also was uh, an athlete uh, and uh, played both uh, baseball and, uh, and soccer on a professional, semi-professional level uh, for a while. So that was, uh, I was appointed and elected to two sports hall of fames in, in Massachusetts, uh, another highlight. Uh, uh, I received an Army Commendation Medal for my service, uh, which is another highlight and accomplishment. Uh, uh, I received many honors uh, in, in my professional career. I spent 35 years as a Clinton manager with Wall State Insurance Company. And then I spent uh, another eight years after I retired from Allstate as a uh, chief operating officer of a couple of corporations in Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, so there's been an awful lot of highlights uh, that I've experienced over the years. Disappointments. Um, disappointments. Um, uh, disappointment I never made it to the major leagues. That's a major disappointment I dealt with for a while. I still fantasize and dream sometimes about getting a call from the New York Yankees to come down and, and pitch for them because they have an opening in their bullpen or something like that. But uh, that, that was a, a disappointment. Uh, um, yeah. Major disappointment was, uh, as I mentioned before, the way we, not me personally, but we as veterans of the Vietnam conflict were treated after we, we got out. Uh, uh, what criminals as opposed to returning military men. So, you know, those are, I guess I could go on and on about highlights and disappointments. So you talked a lot about the history of Hillsborough of the United States, of your uh, experiences. How do you think Hillsborough and perhaps this mission as a whole will evolve into the future? and? Do you think this will be for the better or for the worse? I, I, as I said before, I'm involved in, in some of the uh, processes or, or different uh, groups uh, involved in the political process uh, or the governmental process here. So I have all the faith in the world that uh, Hillsborough will continue to grow and continue to be a, a great place to live. Um, and I think, as I mentioned before also, it'll be a greater place to live if we can motivate the residents of Hillsboro to become involved in uh, the political process, the governmental process, be involved in the schools, get involved in the educational process through um, the school boards and various activities uh, such as that uh, um, that will ensure that you know, the township is continues to go in the right direction. Uh, the opposite may occur, where you get apathy, where you get people who really don't care about their in it. They're, we used to call them in the corporate world the whiffums. The what's in it for me syndrome. If you have a residency that evolves like that, uh, then the chances of Hillsborough continuing to grow and, uh, and and be a great place to live are minimized. So uh, uh, a lot of it is dependent upon the actions of your generation and the generations that come after us. Yeah. Are there any final closing remarks you would like to give about why it's so important to preserve history and the experiences of people like you? I, I think we've covered, we've covered most of them. Uh, um, I don't know that there's any that, that, uh, that we've missed. Uh, again, I can't stress enough the importance of, of uh, uh, being able to document for future generations, just what we did. 
you learn not only by your mistakes, but by the mistakes of others. And you also learn by the successes that you encounter, but also the success of others. So unless you listen to and, and, and heed history, you missed an opportunity at solving some of the problems you'll face in the future. And we don't know what those problems will be, but I can guarantee you there will be problems. Uh, that's life. So. Yeah, it's a very interesting reflection. Thank you for this interview and thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for asking me to participate. It's always fun and uh, hopefully it will be helpful to future generations. Yeah. Thanks.